it's new products. New, 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 okay. new. It's time for new products. It's Christmas Day Day edition uh, here at my desk of Lady Ada. We'll go through a couple of the new products that we've put in over uh, the last week or two. So let's kick it off. First up, we've got an updated product. This is the IS31FL 3731 uh, PWM LED matrix driver. So this is our Charlie Plex driver. It can drive uh, nine by 16 LEDs because it Charlie Plexes them. Um, we sell the grids as well, um, like LED grids with SMT LEDs. This is the driver board. Also handy if you're just driving like a gigantic LED matrix. Um, this is a very inexpensive way to drive all those LEDs. We've updated it by adding STEM IQT connectors because it's uh, all I2C controllable. Um, so it's otherwise the same pinouts on the top and the left. We just had a little spot on the right, added those um, I2C ports, and we also updated the silk screen. Next up. Next up, another updated product. Uh, this is the Chronodot from Mace Tech. Uh, this is kind of famous. This is a really early product we used to sell. It's a product number 255, which is many, wow. many, many years ago. Um, and this used to come with a DS3231, uh, which uh, due to the silicon shortage has been totally unavailable. And so you can see here in this image, it now comes with a Max 3128, sorry, 31328. Uh, we actually covered the 31328 and 31329 on INPI a couple months ago, if you remember. Um, what's interesting about this chip is it's a, also an ultra precise RTC um, from Maxim, um, but what's extra interesting is it is pin, uh, sorry, it's not pin compatible. It is firmware compatible with the DS3231 RTC library. Um, and so if you were using the DS3231 and you want to update to this new 31328, um, this board is pretty much drop-in compatible. You can use your old existing code. Um, I think it basically has the same precision. Uh, the one thing that didn't get added um, to the update chip, the 31328, is an EEPROM, which is why there's, if you see at the bottom there, there's a separate uh, I2C EEPROM chip. Um, but it's on the same I2C bus. So it's like a nice little update. And uh, most important, it's available and you can actually buy it, unlike DS3231s, which are tough to get. All right, next up. Next up, we have two new products of the same family. The PCA9546 is a four channel I2C expander. So this is really handy when you have say four, uh, you know, say DS3231s, uh, RTCs or um, humidity sensors or accelerometers or other devices on the I2C bus that use the same I2C address. And so you're limited, you can only you know, use one per bus, but you want to say control four of them. Um, this is pretty common. People have like, you know, motor driver maybe, or um, they want multiple accelerometers or multiple gyros, um, you know, or multiple uh, humidity or pressure sensors because they want to measure pressure in different locations. So this chip will take one I2C port in and allow you to select uh, four different outputs by writing the address to, the ad, you know, the port number you want to route your signal to, I think onto address uh, 70. And the chip itself also has three address pins, so you can change that. If you're like trying to address, you know, chips that use address 70, of course you can change it to be, you know, 71 to 77. Um, and that way you can address multiple chips on the same port. We carry the TCA9548, which is the eight channel version of this chip. Um, but maybe you don't need as big a version, you know, you don't need as many ports, you don't need eight, you need four, uh, go for it. We also have this chip in a STEMI QT format. Um, so solder free if you have our STEMI QT or quick boards, uh, plug and play. And again, it gives you uh, four channel I2C multiplexing. Um, this board also, in addition to multiplexing, has a three volt level shifter because, you know, maybe you have um, an Arduino Uno on one side that's five volt logic and power, and you want to address I squared C devices that use three volt logic and power. So it'll it'll allow you if you um, go to the back, the one with the quarter, that image if you see on the back, the V out. Uh, jumper by default, uh, it uses the same voltage as the input, the V plus. But if you'd like, you can cut and adjust that trace to use three volts, and so it'll do a lot a three volt logic level shift down. Again, this is the four channel version of the eight channel I squared C multiplexer we put in a while ago. So choose which one, either the breadboard version or the STEMI QT version, uh, as you need. Choose wisely. Choose wisely. Okay, next up. Next up, more uh, STEMI QT accessories. 
Uh, this one is going to be very handy for people who want to connect to 5 volt power or 5 volt logic I squared T devices on the most common 3 volt power and logic microcontrollers and microcomputers that are available now. So if you have, you know, old style Arduino Uno and you want to connect to, uh, you know, for example, the Sen 55, or there's some, you know, maybe uh, GPIO expanders um, or RTCs or other sensors that use 5 volt power or 5 volt logic, uh, you're good to go. But nowadays, a lot of people are using RP2040 Picos or ESP32s or Raspberry Pi computers or even, uh, you know, NRF52 or other modern Arduino compatible or microcontroller boards. They have 3 volt power, 3 volt logic, and um, it's not, it, it's pretty common to see downshifters, but upshifters are a little more rare. So this is an upshifter. Uh, you give it 3 to 5 volt power and logic in, and there's a switch cap uh, charge pump converter that'll give you 100 milliamp continuous or 250 milliamp peak. Um, it's the AP32, sorry, AP3602A, which we have a data sheet uh, attached, and it'll boost up that power from three to five volts, and it'll shift up the uh, I squared C logic from three to five volts as well. So again, handy, there's a couple sensors and devices we've seen where, um, you know, they, they want five volts because there's a motor in the sensor, or there's, uh, you know, it's an old style chip, and so it uses five volts, not three volt logic. Um, and you want to uh, connect to that with your modern three volt microcontroller. Um, there's also, uh, if you go to the quarter shot, um, on the back, you'll see there's a VI squared C jumper. Um, if you want to have power be five volt, but the logic level be three volt, you can cut and set that jumper uh, to use the logic, the, keep the I squared C at the same logic level. Don't shift that up. We've seen that in a couple of devices as well, where again, the power is five volts, but the logic level is three. So you can use this board either way. It's also breadboard compatible if you're not using STEMIQT at all, just you know, solder in the header. Uh, and use it on your favorite breadboard. All right, and the star of the show tonight, besides you, Lady, our team, our customers, our community, everybody who's been helping us out, especially why we took a little bit of time off to bring Kiddo into the world, is Scorpio. Kiddo is a Scorpio, so Scorpio. this is. I wanted to make this uh, get this board out before the end of the yeah. year. Didn't quite get it up for Scorpio season, uh, but that's okay. It was. Uh, it was pretty close, uh, and I wanted to get this up before the end of the year. So Scorpio. this. The RP2040 Scorpio board is finally out and available. Uh, it's going to be in the shop this week. So this is an RP2040, um, and this board is feather-shaped. It has all the feather pins that you know and love, but on the end there, there's another 2 by 8 header. Uh, one row is ground. The other is eight contiguous pins connected to uh, the PIO um, um state machine inside and they're contiguous and so they're really good for driving lots of neopixels especially since the rp2040 has uh, 264k of ram so it's a ton of ram it's got the pio state machine which is excellent for driving neopixels um, it's a you know dual core so of course you can have all your in addition to having all your neopixels dma you could have two cores if you want to do extra computation on one core and then blit in the other one and maybe get Wi-Fi data or something and, and, and use that to calculate or, or adjust what the um, graphics sh being shown on your NeoPixels are. Um, but the RP2040 makes for a perfect NeoPixel driver. And so this board is basically designed specifically for you want a feather, you want an RP2040, you want to drive a ton of NeoPixels, and we've got Arduino and CircuitPython code that does that, again, all with DMA. So you don't have to sit there and like toggle each pin and, you know, hold your processor hostage, um, the RPIO peripheral goes off and does it, and you can uh, you know, check when it's done, and then you can compute the next frame of data. So um, it's got USB-C, it's got battery, um, and the important part is on the right-hand side uh, of the board. Sorry. Let's go uh, on the, right. no, that one. Yeah, right. on the right-hand side of the board. So on the left-hand side, you've got like the, you know, the business end, USB-C, battery, the reset button, regulator, battery charging, middle is the RP2040 chip. Um, there's a small NeoPixel on D4 if you want to have onboard um, notification to tell you what the status is. There's eight megabytes of flash memory, so you can use that for your program storage, or of course, uh, both in Arduino and CircuitPython, you can put a file system on it. If you want to have uh, images, you know, uh, configuration data, um, what have you stored on that flash memory, there's tons of flash memory. 
There's a boot pin, a uh, boot button for entering into boot mode. That's also available as a user button. Um, I think it's on GPIO 7. Uh, so you can, once the RP2040 is booted, uh, that button becomes a user input button. There's a vertical stem QT pin. And then below that, you see a chip and some resistor packs. That is the logic level shifter. So um, even though a lot of modern NeoPixel strips are happy with three volt logic, not all of them are, especially if you're giving them 5.5 volts of power. And so there's an onboard logic level shifter that'll take those eight signal pins um, and shift them up. I think it's pins uh, 16 to 23. So those GPIOs get shifted up from three volts to five volts, whatever is on the USB port. And then there's uh, 100 ohm resistors just to kind of reduce any ringing effect, especially with long uh, wires going into your NeoPixels. Um, and then on the back, uh, if you go to the quarter shot, there is, um, if you happen to want to configure it on the back, you can change the V logic, the logic level output from five volts to three volts. Say you don't want to drive uh, five volt uh, signal into something, you're driving non NeoPixels or so maybe something that uh, requires a lower level voltage. And also you can change the direction of that shifter. It's uh, nominally only output, um, but if you want to turn this into say a logic analyzer, you can uh, change the direction to be inputs and it's five volt safe because it's using a five volt safe level shifter. And then um, that signal could come in and you could turn this into say like an eight channel logic analyzer and uh, use some open source software to do so. Um, but we really think this would be great for people making LED art because um, you know, there's, we've seen a lot of art projects in New York and online where people have, you know, massive displays of NeoPixels, oftentimes using, unfortunately, chips and microcontrollers are no longer available or they're very hard to get right now. But the RP2040 is really easy to get. Um, so we think using the NeoPixel 8 library that we've got, or you can even, um, because this chip has enough RAM and is pretty fast, you can use the NeoPixel 8 HDR library. And that adds dithering. Um, sub pixel sub sampling, which basically means that not only do you get that eight bits per color, 24 bits per pixel color, but you also get another two by do some, doing some temporal dithering. Um, very good for when you're doing gamma correction or you have uh, low brightness LEDs. Um, a lot of people notice that because the LED brightness is linearly PWM'd, but our eyes, you know, kind of are logarithmic, um, LEDs that are at the lower, brightness level, um, the brightness shifts change um, more dramatically than at the higher level. With dithering, you you know, you get an extra couple bits. Um, it smooths that out and makes it a little bit, um, you know, more of an elegant distribution at the lower brightness levels. All right. And uh, that's Scorpio. That's new products. It's a very happy Scorpion. All right. We'll, um, we'll see everybody throughout the week. We have a lot of new videos and more planned. We have multiple setups as we do tons of videos, not only for the last week of the year, but as 2023 approaches. So uh, buckle up. There's going to be a lot of hardware, everybody. That's right. Thanks for coming by the new, new, new. New, new, new. Here at my desk. Ooh.